Hello race and diecast fans, welcome to the channel, it's all about racing. I'm Mark and today we're going to take a look at this number 74 Chevrolet C6 Corvette that raced in the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Uh, this is part of the Spark 24 Hours of Le Mans collection, uh, which is a unique selection of cars, all that competed in Le Mans. Um, uh, regardless of how successful they were or not. Uh, however, if you're familiar with the C6 Corvette, uh, this was one of the most successful generations of the four that were out, the C5, the C6, the C7, and today's current C8, um, winning both over the C's at Le Mans as well as the IMSA series here in the United States. Uh, this being a Spark model, it is a resin sealed model. It has absolutely no moving parts, uh, no open parts, but the details on this are exceptional. Being part of the 24 Hours of Le Mans collection, and this one actually dates back to 2010, so it has the older box you see here that has the French 24 Ours de Mans on it. It also has the reflective silver backing inside of the uh, the car, inside of the uh, jewel case, uh, so the car reflects off of it. Very clever, I think, from a marketing standpoint. Uh, Pro number 74, 24 Hours of Le Mans, 2011. And you look at the back, it shows you a picture of the track. Turn around, and you get the usual mumbo-jumble that you typically get on the bottom of boxes. The Spark Car, ACO, 24 Hours of Le Mans, uh, and it is officially licensed from Chevrolet, or General Motors, uh, who make the Chevrolet Corvette. So, now let's uh, take a look at the car, and I'll give you some cool details and fun facts about the car that you may not know. And here's a good look at the car. Uh, uh, as you can see, these are mounted on very nice wooden bases uh, attached by two screws. Gives it a nice, heavy uh, uh, feel. Um, as you know, this is the Chevrolet Corvette C6 ZR1, number 74, that raced in Le Mans in 2011. Uh, fun fact about the Corvette C6R, it is a grand touring race car, which was made and built by Pratt & Miller on contract by GM. Pratt & Miller have made the Corvettes ever since the, the fifth generation came on the racing scene, and they still make the C8s, and they do run and manage them. The pit crews are Pratt & Miller employees, not GM, uh, but they are contracted out to do the job. Um, this car debuted in 2005 to replace the outgoing C5R. One of the things that was unique about this car and different from the C5R was the headlights were now embodied into the car itself. They were not pop-up headlights like you had on the C5R. Corvette purists absolutely hated this car when it first came out uh, because it did not have those pop-up headlights. Um, I think it looks good. The, the headlights, well, how they tried to make the C5R more aerodynamic was it was just, just a terrible version of a pop-up. It wasn't a pop-up headlight at all. It was, it was barely a raised headlight that kind of looked like it was a semi-pop-up headlight. Just awful looking, but a very, very good car. Uh, this car was built in two chassis. The GT1, which was more powerful than the GT2, uh, the initial car that came out from 2005 to 2009, had 590 horsepower. And the GT2 from 2009 to 2013 had 470 horsepower. It was powered by a 7.6 liter V8 and a 6 point liter V8 for the GT2 car. Uh, and a couple of unique things that they did because of the all the, uh, the, the the fuel tank and all the other things in the back of the car, the drivers could not see out of the rear of it. So they had a camera installed on it. And this is one of the very first cars to do that with a display in the cockpit so the driver could see outside of it. Um, they also had air conditioning, something that a lot of cars did not have at that time. Uh, and something that actually rolls over to today's Corvette is called varial displacement, where the car would actually dis, uh, disable half the cylinders for better fuel economy. For example, if they were under yellow and just cruising around at 50 miles an hour, it would run on four cylinders instead of eight to save fuel. Very, very clever, very sharp. Uh, it, did, it didn't have a negative effect on engine wear, which was very, very good. But, uh, but just some cool facts about it. Uh, now let's take a closer look at the car. And of course, this being a spark car, as I mentioned, it is resin. It is beautifully detailed. Um, one thing that I really like about the sixth generation uh, cars, as you know, the staple of Corvettes is yellow, 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 yellow. They've been yellow you know, race cars since the C5. The C6 Corvette, like this one, had a lot of different variations every year. Uh, they never got rid of the yellow, but they added like the, the cool accents, the, the silver and black that you see on this, uh, which made it look a little different. Uh, they didn't hardly do that ever with the C7 and the C8. They only changed the color up once, and that was for Sebring. Uh, and they basically made the number 
three car gray uh, instead of the usual yellow, but that was it. But they always did cool little touches with the C6 every year. Uh, this one for 2011 I thought was especially cool. Uh, note that this being a front engine car, as they all were until the eighth generation came out, your exhaust pipe comes out of the side under the driver's door, so there is no exhaust in the back. This is not uncommon with front engine race cars. Um, like all Spark models, the wheels are very, very sharp. You see Michelin tires, brake rotors, brake calipers, all very apparent. The interior cockpit of this car is really, really cool. Um, you can see a little bit of it here. I mean, the details on the on Spark cars are just amazing. Um, I particularly like the interior details. That is where they really, really shine. They're, they're great on the exterior too, don't get me wrong. Uh, but when the windows aren't tinted and you can see in them somewhat, um, uh, you know, and as I roll it around here, you can see the seat belts, the steering wheel, and see the dash and some of the other uh, uh, things on the inside there. And, uh, very, very cool. Very sharp. This being the number four car, it always has the black banner on it. The number three car has white, uh, regardless of whether it's racing at IMSA or at uh, Le Mans. The front nose of the car is slightly rounded, almost comes to a point, so to speak. There you can see the Corvette logo clearly over the uh, uh, the, uh, the air intake uh, vent there. Nice mesh grill, inlaid uh, metal, not plastic, not painted. You'd never find that most of the time on a Sparks car. I won't say all because one of the Corvettes did disappoint me. Uh, this was not one of them. you got the nice tow hook. You see the front splitter on there. Fog lights and the ever unpopular headlights, uh, which Corvette purists, as I mentioned, absolutely hated. I personally like them. I'm a Corvette purist, or at least I think I am. Uh, I own one, so maybe I should be. Uh, but a good look at the front of the car, CompuWare being one of the big sponsors. Uh, the black mirrors, you know, now today they have the red mirrors. Um, and the green numbers, denoting this was a pro entry in the 24 Hours of Le Mans. It's a good look at the passenger side. The only real difference between the passenger side and the driver's side is you do have the fuel uh, input uh, on there and also the air jack, uh, that little tiny circle that you see under the, uh, uh, looks like, a, I don't know, a, right right behind the uh, the air uh, the air vents that, you know, that release air from the uh, from the tunnel within the tires there. See, see that little black circle there? That's where they plug the air jack into it. You also have the exhaust on this side. So this car does have exhaust on both sides of it. Some cars only have it on one. The drivers of this particularly successful car were Oliver Gavin, Jan Magnussen, and Richard Westbrook. They were a heck of a trio. This car absolutely rocked when it was on the, uh, on the race circuit. Uh, it was constantly up against the Aston Martins, the Porsches, uh, and other cars and and qu quite frankly it, it just owned the track when it was out there it was it was a very very tough car to beat it was always a favorite in whatever race it was in um here's a good look at the back of the car absolutely beautiful and there you go again you see just nice grill work uh, no massive rear diffuser as you see on the current cars back in 2011 they didn't have that technology yet uh, Corvette Racing, you got the Jake logo under under the uh, headlights on the left, 74 Pro you see there. There's the tow hook, the arrow that points to it. Guys, this is a beautiful car, really, really cool. Uh, I think I picked this up for right around 50 bucks, including shipping. It is still available on eBay, I think. Um, if not, there are other variations of it where the paint scheme is a little different. Take a look at the back again. I like how it kind of wraps around and... Uh, you know, you still have the yellow back there as the primary color, the black and the uh, silver just accented as they wrap around the headlights. And I just think it looks really sharp. It's a nice touch to the yellow that everybody likes without offending the purist too much by changing the color uh, and just adding a little variation to it to make the cars every year look a little bit more different and a little bit more interesting than they were the previous year. Again, my name is Mark. Thanks for tuning in to It's All About Racing. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe.